This is a special emergency broadcast. There has been an outbreak. A virulent airborne disease. That is the cross between smallpox, Ebola, and the AIDS virus. The only known cure is for you to like, comment, and subscribe right now. Good luck, and Godspeed. I am the 10th man, Beef King Salad, and your host for the Fano Podcast, and I'm joined today by my wonderful friend, Harris Kelly. How are you, sir? Dead. Dead? Yeah, just a bit. Just a bit dead. All right. How was your Christmas? Yeah, wasn't too bad. Better than mine? Um, well, I wasn't working, so yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and he turns the blade. Um <laughs> No, it's it's been a it's been a rather rather interesting Christmas, I think. Uh, spending time with that random guy at his house mm-hmm. it was good. With his uh, in-laws, <laughs> just the in-law. It I was amazing. Want, yeah, the one's coming. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never had my body so completely filled with dumplings in my entire life. I know, right? Uh, we uh, anyway. <laughs> It was a dump. The Just first day of the, dump, the it was the dumpling festival day. I'm not 100 mm-hmm. percent sure with uh, everything related, but as uh, yep. mother-in-law just sat there making dumplings, and yep. after the dumplings consumed my stomach and began filling my lungs, there were still more dumplings coming. And as mm-hmm. Louis C.K. said, "The meal is not over when I'm full. The meal is over when I hate myself." And I did That's for true. about an hour, but you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I bet Louis C.K. is hating himself right now, but we won't get into that. No, uh, we will not. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of controversy, have you seen the um, the Frank Castle, not Frank Castle, Frank Underwood slash Kevin Spacey video clip that was posted no. everywhere? Oh my yeah. God, you have to watch it. It's super creepy. Okay. Like, he is a fantastic actor. Like, yes. fantastic. Like, every single movie I've ever seen him in, he's been... Yeah, he is a fantastic actor. But he was, as a he person, was the only good part to that uh, to that Superman Returns movie, um, <laughs> which is really sad, really when it comes down to it, is because he's such a great actor. It really sucks that he kind of fucked that all up. But yeah, know, but th- th- this is the thing. It's like he did it years ago. But like, I'm not weighing in on it. And I'm 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 made my mistake with um, everything else. So I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna put it in a basket and put it to the side and just be like cool i'm gonna support whatever happens but uh yeah, yeah. no nah, that was i mean i think it's like my opinion on it is he's you know he still did all those great acting things it's not doesn't change it doesn't change what he's done it it just changes your respect for the person you know and it's just like whatever whatever the case is he kind of fucked some stuff up and it kind of went bad for him around that stuff and that's that's basically it and it's the 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 worst part for it because obviously we're not affected by whatever he did at the at like personal level but we are suffering it sucks for us yeah it sucks for us that that because of whatever he did we don't get to see him in, in acting in good movies and instead we get fucking shitty actors all the time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is one thing we have abundance in the world and that is terrible actors I am. Um, following the, the, the random segue we're on, uh, mm. so I watched the new Black Mirror movie Okay. with the same actor from Dunkirk. Oh, yeah. And it's a pick your, par- pick your adventure and you use the controller to choose it. And it took me, so the, move, the, like, the whole thing, if you played it like one sequence to another, is an hour and 30 something minutes. And right. I swear to God, I was watching it for two hours. Right. Because I kept just okay. like keep switching. Deciding, yeah. No, I don't want this one. I don't want this option. Because <laughs> I thought it'd be real. Like, oh, I'll just like what I'll do is I'll watch it twice. Not obviously today, because um, for you folks at home who don't know what's going on, I've been awake for twenty hours. So if I get a bit weird, That's yeah, um, I was gonna go. Okay, I'm just gonna pick all of the left hand side ones, right? Yeah. And then the next time I watch it, I'm gonna pick all the right hand side ones. But the, yeah. the, it doesn't let you do it. Oh. And um, as I posted in the in our, in our group chat, um, mm-hmm. well, it's not actually, it's the battle on the field group chat, um, mm-hmm. 
which was back when Eddie Cooler was playing. I miss you, Yeti. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Teddy needs a hug. That's all I have to say about people who don't like Black Mirror. Okay, fair enough. You haven't seen that season I mean, either, have you? I like, I like Black Mirror, but I um, I don't like it since it came to um, <laughs> to America, basically. So. Well, if this helps you pick up this movie and watch it, mm-hmm. it is British made. Well, that's good. So the acting's British. There's no Americans in it. It's not set in America. I think it is set in America. Actually, I don't know. Well, we'll no, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Anyway, um, and then after I watched that, I just finished Creed, which, um, as you know, if you've been following the channel, I've been playing in VR, and I actually just finally watched the movie that came out (laughs) ages ago. But you know, the second one is that even out yet? Uh, no. Hang on, hang on. Let's. I've seen posters for it. Let's play Google here. Creed Part 2. Good old Google. Creed Google. Part 2. Oh, yeah, there's a trailer. Official trailer. It's 2000. What the hell? It's just out this year? When is it out? When's the release date? Okay, apparently it's already out. Sweet. Oh, yeah. I may need to watch the second one. Yeah, I may need to get on that. Get on that. <laughs> get on that later. Maybe when I have some sleep, hey? Might be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um i'm on my second wind though because like, oh bro i was like i was like bobbing my head and shit and throwing up my arms it's great fantastic movie i thoroughly enjoyed it um yeah playing playing so be, to be brutally honest for anybody who doesn't know what the hell i'm talking about because there'll be fans of one thing and fans of another or maybe you know 10 you know we'll, we'll go the 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 rogan podcast and someone will come back and like i've been listening to his original ones when he was doing it at his house so the one's right. like under 100, um, 150. Um, Fair enough. Seven years later, eight years later, because I think mm. they were filmed in 2010. Um, Man, that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. He was talking about doing season two of um, Fear Factor. And I was like, oh that God. shit was crazy. I used to watch it all the time. It was on during dinner time, and they always had gross, like, eating bulls penises. And it's like, you know, mm, bulls penis. And he's like yep, standing there delicious. staring at some blonde girl being like, you can do this. Just chew, swallow, just chew and swallow. <laughs> anyway. Yep, um, that's what blonde girls always say to me. Anyway. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anywho. <laughs> anywho. So Creed, the VR game, I've been playing it a lot. It's uh, really, really got into that. Like, I love boxing. I used to spar all the time with my old workmates. Um, the only downside to it was because we, you know, there was no real riff, riffing. It was just like three guys in a garage punching each other, uh, fight club style. <laughs> and, no, we had gloves and mouth guards and shit. It wasn't like real fight club where you're like holding a dude's legs open and repeatedly hitting him in the groin. Um, yeah. That came after. Uh, you, I felt a bit slow. We all felt a bit slow. There'd be moments yeah. we'd be like, hey, can you pass that thing that makes words? Mm-hmm. on paper and you're like pen and you're like yeah, yeah writing the head magic magic Turn writing stick yeah does that to your old brain sloshes mm-hmm. it around a bit yeah like a scrambled egg without the uh cracking of the skull but mm-hmm. it was good like and thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed boxing as a as a sport as a fitness sport because i felt physically like i was physically changing because of it because it you know there's one thing about exercising and doing push-ups or doing whatever, doing reps of whatever mm. weights or whatever, is when you get to a point is that you're like, I don't want to do this anymore, and you stop. You can't mm. really do that when you're sparring with somebody because no. if I put my hands can, down, they're going to hurt me. So I have to keep my true. arms up no matter how tired I get. So <laughs> shout out to the boys. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed punching you in the head and being punched in the head. And Fair that enough. sounds like... Uh, like innuendo for something but it's not mm. unless you don't uh, yeah fair enough yep I and that's really and that's really th- i'm thoroughly enjoying it and if um we weren't doing this right now i'd probably be playing creed and vr and sweating literal bullets because summer has hit hard in wellington in the last couple mm. of days it has it's not it's not great yeah just constant fan all the time yeah yeah shout out to Gorius. A constant fan all the time. A constant fan, yeah, absolutely correct. Um, yeah, it's it's been it's been pretty awful here. It's really in Christmas time in general. Is is just trying to stay cold 
really. Especially for me, because I refuse to uh, to not wear black. So, you know. I'll keep wearing black until something darker comes along. Exactly. Um, yeah, you know. I tried to buy shorts. Go outside. Yeah. yeah. You go outside at like at midday and you can just feel yourself getting skin cancer. It's pretty <laughs> great. <laughs> Thanks, rest of the world, for polluting the atmosphere and causing a hole That's, over yeah. our country. It's fucking funny then, man. That we're the ones who get, get the ozone hole for all the rest of you busts using your CRCs. Yeah. Eh, you know, it's fine. Just a little old New Zealand. Highest skin cancer rate in the world. Yeah, I think it's also that she'll be right attitude of not wearing sunblock at any point in time. Like when yeah, I was when I was in Australia, I was putting on sunblock every day. Mm. Here in New Zealand, oh. I walk around with a shaved head, and I'm quite a moly dude. Like I've got extensive amounts of moles, and I've had one of them removed from my body surgically, mm-hmm. yeah. um, for the reason that the doctor was like, eh, "Let's just dig it out of you with a scalpel," and I was like, "Cool." Now let's just take it anyway, just in case. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't yeah. remember the last time my skin other than like you know the normal parts of my body touch sunlight and we do not give a shit about that and i was yeah. sunburned so much as a kid it was mainly just yeah. my arms and ears and shit though yeah i haven't been sunburned um like badly ever like never so bad that i couldn't like move or anything i've been burnt really badly and like had like peeling and all that stuff when i was a kid but like as an adult um or even just like as a teenager i didn't really want to be in the sun anyway so i was mostly fine and a lot of the time i would like i'd brown really really well (laughs) instead of actually burning like rotisserie chicken exactly um so yeah but absolutely like when it gets when it gets so 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 bad and i actually have to be out in the sun sunblock all the way because i don't need that you don't need need that that in my life um i remember one year doing a road trip and that was hilarious because what my left arm was sunburnt like, oh, really yeah. badly yep. and nothing else because my arm had been that out the, the window worst. and it was just so like your, your driving arm when you when yeah. you're when you're a driver in new zealand because we have our steering wheel on on the right side of the car um the right <laughs> side the right the right, right side. side the, the right, right side, side is the right side yeah exactly the correct right side um yeah. and we have which means a lot of the time you know when someone's a driver in summer because they've got an extremely tan right arm instead of a left arm. And you know when they're a passenger because they've got an extremely tan left arm instead of a right It's pretty great. Yeah. That's pretty great. Yeah. I remember um, being awkwardly having to put, like, aloe vera on one arm. <laughs> well, at least was it's, you know. Full up lobster, eh? Like, that was, yeah. that was pinky. Oh. <laughs> At least when it's only on one arm, it means that you can like just rest that one arm and do everything with the other arm. Yeah. So that's nice. I'm pretty ambidextrous and uh, like I find my skills as right hand, but like I open doors and everything else on my left. It's a bit weird. The uh, yeah, no, getting sunburned sucks. And New Zealand, we get sunburned quite heavily in comparison to most places. Like I was talking to uh, old workmate's daughter had moved to France. And she mm. went from being like pasty as to being like full like olive because they just mm-hmm. spend the entire time in the sun and never get sunburnt. Yeah. We're in New Zealand. It's like, cool, you're outside for 15 minutes. Here's a little bit of cancer for you. Just mm-hmm. a tiny sprinkling of cancer. Just right just on tiny. top. Like a friggin' not even a cherry. Cherries mm. are too much. Like when you take a <laughs> well, bar of dark. <laughs> yeah, red is a cherry, but like, you know, that dark chocolate sprinkle. Like when yep. you sh- finally shave on a microplane chocolate on top, that that's exactly. that's how much cans just you get from just existing in, yep. in, More in New Zealand. Yeah. More cheese, yeah. The Parmesan shake, that's my favorite. Yeah. It's just yeah, it's because yeah, because of that hole in the ozone layer. It's 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 pretty great that just like I truly science. appreciate it. Science gave us gave us the uh, the refrigeration and then gave us the burning. It was the um the interesting ones the talking of ozone depletion mm-hmm. on, a, on a segue here uh the ones they use on planes are pretty cool super okay. illegal to own though like they all got they all <laughs> get like anybody who finds ones like told like you have to ring this number and people come mm-hmm. up and pick it up for from you and they mm-hmm. take it to a special um facility in australia they've got one yeah 
Because you gotta, you've got to make sure that it never gets everywhere. into the atmosphere because it destroys yeah. like cubic meters. Actually, exactly, it completely ruins the ozone layer. Luckily, it like the science has shown that since we've just stopped doing it, it is slowly coming back. But it's going to take a lot longer to get there. Um, well, I was especially recently- considering that, like, so the, the the ozone layer is a very specific uh, combination of of oxygen molecules. Um, and we're still not producing much of that because we're producing a lot more um, of that other one, that CO2. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find the thing that I just remembered. Um, right. Yeah, there's yeah. a... Talking of talking of protecting the atmosphere. Um, oh, God. Oh, God. Um, oh, no, poor there one. we go. No, no safe search. Safe search is off. There was there was not <laughs> pornography folks at home and um there was less than thirty seconds, so you robots can go suck a robot dick. Um We've made an VLF bubble, which oh. is like another um another like radiation protecting I'm just reading the article from Big Big Think here. I remember seeing it on uh on the old facebook because i like big thing on facebook yeah very low frequency radio signals from 30 to 30 kilohertz have been found to affect where particles near earth and space um near earth uh, 20 hours of not sleep near mm-hmm. earth space move so basically um like the magnetic bubble that protects us from not having our atmosphere stripped off by solar winds we've made a like a artificial one which i thought was interesting yeah. that's pretty interesting i mean i expected it to happen eventually because the idea oh, yeah. was there for um for doing the same thing to mars um to eventually recreating or restarting their magnetosphere so that uh, yeah because so they stop getting their atmosphere <laughs> blasted off yeah because that's the thing about the terraforming of mars is we can just like dump a whole bunch of factories that just make co2 like um, oh, greenhouse can- gases yeah, we could absolutely do that, but it'll just get blown stripped off. right off. Yeah. yeah. So we'd have to have so. a whole bunch of radio stations and that. Because I remember mm, reading I, that... Sorry, you were saying? So there's, so there's an idea that um, that basically what we'd do is just like stick a, a satellite um, and like a, um, right between um, Mars and the sun that generates the same radioactive field. So it it gets pushed on by the, by the solar winds and it basically wraps it around mass when it does that it would have to be like in a set pos- position and honestly it would just be easier to just like restart the core probably <laughs> like the movie once the we figure out, yeah once we figure out how to do that of course so if it's I definitely remember- not gonna be it's not gonna be specifically place nuclear bombs under the earth crust that's not gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> but that movie was great i'll give you that much um i'm gonna find the cast now just because i can't remember <laughs> Oh, it was Aaron Eckhart. Yeah, That's was, yeah. right. Aaron Eckhart was in that movie. It was 2003. I'm pretty sure I saw that in the movie theaters too. Oh, nice. I didn't. <laughs> Wait, this... But no, it was good. That's not Aaron Eckhart. What am I on about? Is this the main guy? No, it looks like Richard Nixon. No, it was Aaron Eckhart. What am I on about? <laughs> There's just like characters in here called Dad and Mum and Little Boy. It's like... And they're like <laughs> above like Chief Engineer Mission Control. It's like, yeah... Mm. That's because they did, like, those random fucking... It was, like, really Michael Bay shots of, like, people on Earth doing shit. Who made so this movie? Made Director Bay, what remember. else did he do? What else has he made? Oh, he made Entrapment. The movie where everyone just remembers Catherine Cedar's own butt. That's the only thing I can remember of that movie. Um, other than well, Sean you know. Connery's career failing. Like, just petering out and Catherine Cedar going... Catherine Cedar Jones' butt? Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's all I remember of that movie. And then she was in Zorro. <laughs> oh, the, the the nine degrees of separation shit, eh? I love it. When you just, like, go down a random rabbit hole and you're like, oh my god, I didn't realize he was that, that random back guy in that movie. Like, uh, how yeah. Ron Jeremy's in Ghostbusters. Did you know that for okay. a random fact? Yeah, Ron Jeremy is in Ghostbusters. Now, for you okay. kids at kids at home that don't know who Ron Jeremy is, he was a figure skater. Yeah. Oh, no. Fair enough. 
Um, but anyway. yeah, so <laughs> back to back to backtrack. Uh, Elon Musk's at about two hundred thousand dollars a person, is what he's financially <coughs> looking at. Two hundred thousand dollars a person. Yeah, American. Is that just a trip, or is that like life costs? That's like a trip. Right. Okay. So that's going to how much I mean, it's going to cost per person. That's but, fair, considering the amount of fuel required. Um, for a, for a standard up and down trip. Um, well, just up. I think yes. the Russians. You can pay the Russians about a million. Well, you used to be able to pay the Russians about a million. Yeah. Well, that's just to go into into space. But he's talking about going to um to Mars, right? Yeah. So getting out of the atmosphere. Um, it's like a it's a certain amount of fuel per per person even with a reusable rocket which is going to make it way cheaper so obviously if they were paying for the for the trip before without a reusable rocket you have to pay for all of the fuel the entire rocket <laughs> and everything else that you need so it would be ridiculous amounts of money billions of dollars um but with a reusable rocket yeah it's he's just you're just paying for the fuel um um which would need to be able to lift whatever you want to carry as well as yourself um all the way to mars yeah, because I just I just googled to confirm there, uh, and today it costs ten thousand dollars to put a pound of payload into into Earth orbit. Yep, yeah, that's the one. So that's when you divide that up, that's actually really cheap. Like two hundred thousand yeah. dollars is pretty. That's a pretty pretty decent uh, price there. Thanks, yeah, Elon. He's, he's giving yeah. us a good deal with that one. Elon's um, going to go down the history of like one of those great people. I one hundred percent guarantee. If he, if he builds a um a proper proper space bridge, I mean a um a space elevator, um, then it'll be fantastic because then he can he, then he can continue charging that amount of money and it'll be f- bugger all for him to send people to space and get them to Mars. Um, because yeah, the main issue is always just getting out of the atmosphere. Once you're out, you're good. So a space elevator would really sort that right out. Um. I've been doing research into space elevators, by the way, <coughs> just on a random, random, oh, yeah? I can follow you there. The issue is the length of cable, and if you made it out of steel, it'd break under its own weight, oh, so yeah, that's why they're use. trying uh, carbon nanotubing, but we can't make anything more than like a couple of millimeters long at this yeah, point in time. We've been, we've been tra- struggling with, with a lot of those um, those future materials, um, which allows us to, to get that sort of stuff. Even then, you don't necessarily have to have a, um, a full space bridge, uh, for a full space elevator. Uh, there are other alternatives, something like um, building a, um, a, a... What's it called? Man, brain stuff. I haven't even, I haven't even been awake for 20 hours. Um, <laughs> you have a satellite um or like a um a space station built that has basically just has a long cord <laughs> off the end of it basically and you just and like just run along the, the planet and try and grab it and like tie shit onto it <laughs> sure <laughs> and like not that long lean out the window and like wind that shit up <laughs> It would need to be. It would, yeah. It would. It wouldn't be able to be that long because it would cause too much drag. Um, it just needs to be long enough so that it reaches down um, far enough uh, so that uh, an aircraft could get to it, basically. Um, and then you would be saving way more on fuel because you just need to get um, to that level and then be pulled up. Yeah. Um, obviously, that that ship would need that that station would need a lot more fuel and, and all that sort of stuff. So it'd have refueling cycles, all that sort of stuff. It would require a lot of maintenance, um, but it would be way easier than trying to build something that that reaches out into space um but you know we can get there we'll get there eventually i think the, the strategy um, in that would be building down rather than up yeah exactly like you'd want to lower would, it would rather than try and like stack stuff i remember seeing that design for that uh space skyscraper yeah and they were literally the guy because i think it was on thunderfoot and he was like this is so ridiculous it's beyond ridiculous like the International yeah. Space Station has a window that is a hexagon, hexa, hexagonal shape. So it has yeah. uh, one, two, three, four, five window panes. And mm-hmm. we're selling ridiculous, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Because yeah. it's one piece of machined aluminium fit with the windows, which are basically bulletproof glass. Because yeah. a speck of paint traveling at, what, 15,000 miles per hour? will um pretty much put a hole straight yeah, in you even more than that basically anything going the other way or even anything stationary um in the atmosphere is just yeah you know, going bullet bullet speeds higher than um, bullet speeds higher than bullet speeds because there's no well there's less than than 
earth friction so the speed of sound isn't even a um isn't really a barrier yeah (laughs) yeah it's more of a like a thing we passed years ago we're just moving on with our lives basically Um, because i remember the space shuttle seeing photos of the space shuttle one screen and it had just filled with pock marks yeah they were like half a golf ball and they were from flakes of paint yeah exactly it's just the amount of I'm, supr- that we can get I'm to. surprised we haven't had like some like Michael Bay esque shit happen with um Can you arrest people on another day? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Down the damn street. Um I yep. think he's just doing like he's just going around round circles on a friggin' roundabout now. He's just, you know, trying to get home quick quick. Yeah. Get out of my way, guys. Oh, when you really need to go to the bathroom and there's like traffic <laughs> and shit and you're like, Whoa! for the love of god (laughs) correct white knuckled like "Ah!" um yeah that that was that was crazy like i'm surprised we haven't had like a like thankfully thankfully because it's like (laughs) these people like the top of the you need a doctorate to iron their underpants but yeah i think it's getting closer um oh jeez they're coming for you they're coming for me turn off the computer what the hard drive yeah it must have been me talking to my father earlier, wishing him a uh, Merry Christmas. Because I've been at work on the 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th, and I finished this morning on the 29th. Oh, we've, we've locked in what day it is now. Um, talking about voting yes on that referendum uh, for, <sighs> in two years' time. A year's time, actually, now. Or coming up to a year's time. Nice. Um, so. I think it'll be a financially viable idea for New Zealand. Mm-hmm. but anyway reversing back um <laughs> yeah, back again back again yeah i'm surprised we haven't had an astronaut get like you know swiss cheese get, by anything get yet. Swiss cheese. that's yeah. because we knew we basically knew immediately because we've been sending stuff up that had just been being pelted by things that are out in the atmosphere um the real thing that we need to worry about um is is that if we don't protect ourselves from these things um at some point oh you will never be able uh, to leave yeah at some point there might be a a point where something gets damaged like the the international space station or one of the other bigger satellites gets damaged to a point where it just uh, evaporates in uh vaporizes yeah um but into not into just vapor but into little tiny pieces um which are all still going fast enough to um to destroy anything in their path um basically just watch gravity a, guys and that's a possibility and it's a bit more than gravity though like this is something that like it would it would like become like a a, a, a shield a sort of a dust a dust cloud <laughs> a shield but not a, not a uh an, an, a, an outward shield it wouldn't protect anything coming in no it'd protect anything us coming in would still, yeah it would stop us from leaving it would protect the rest of the universe from, from us. the plague that is the human race <laughs> So, Firefly got yeah. one season. Look up how many seasons there are on Jersey Shore, folks. We do not know. Or Desperate Housewives. We do not deserve. Or we do not keeping deserve. up with the Kardashians. We do not deserve <laughs> to exist. Bring on the meteor. Oh, my God. Can I be a Sephiroth and summon the meteor? And then me yeah. and my mum can fly off into space with it. Be fantastic. Exactly. Let's Correct. get right on that. Um, I'm going to go to the yeah. uh, Nibbleheim right now. Yeah. Obviously, there is a. Hang there on, is, the there still will be ways to get out of um out of earth atmosphere in that case but it would just take a, a long time for us to sort that out you know we'd have to like laser beam them out of out of orbit or whatever it would basically ruin a lot of the space stuff but you think oh oh no we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer to go to space yeah that's not the, the only thing that's bad about that because that'll destroy all of the satellites we currently have goodbye space, facebook means, goodbye yeah internet uh, yeah. GPS. Oh, um, your sat nav being able to so fly and not think you're yeah. over Syria or something stupid and get shot down. Like what happened? Why the original reason that GPS went free and mm-hmm. became to public domain? Because the guys yeah. like didn't the guys? I can't remember. I'm gonna Google that before I start quoting shit. <laughs> uh, GPS. But yeah, it'll uh, it'll take out all of that stuff, um, which means goodbye a whole bunch of your your fantastic features. Um, but also a lot of high-speed internet relies on satellite stuff, um, and so does a lot of TV uh, rely on on satellite um, broadcasting um, because cable is not fast enough, basically. 
So, because that one's plugged into Honolulu, wasn't it? Uh, so we're physically plugged in. We are, um, but there's some broadcast stuff that's done um, via satellite to us as well. So New Zealand and, and other island countries would be cut off from a lot of stuff. But yeah, we're connected to Australia um, and uh, Hawaii, and we just got a new, brand new, super fast cable put in um, between uh, Hawaii, Australia, and us in like a three way. Wow! 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 So internet not necessarily completely off the table, but oh, we'll be back to like, like yeah. dial up internet, which was horrible. No, yeah. no, no. We still have a lot of, um, we still have a lot of high speed internet. It's just um, certain features of it will be gone. So GPS will be out of the out of the question. Um, no more Netflix. A of, yeah, no a more. lot of cellular devices might be out of the out of the question as well. We have to set up a lot more radio towers um, just so that we can actually transmit those signals because a lot of them would like bounce between a couple of cell towers and then go to a satellite to get somewhere else so international calling is going to be a, a bit a bit difficult people are probably gonna have to start using using voice over ip a lot more which means i guess that that business is going to go right up if that happens but so hey. basically what we're doing is we're planning on investing in voice over ip and then <laughs> yeah, we're going to build some missiles shoot the international <laughs> space station down and become super villains <laughs> That's how my brain, my twenty-hour-old brain has connected all that stuff, man. We're, we're yeah. now super villains. Um, yeah, I was reading an article is. about people actually being super villains, uh, like coming up with stupid ideas that were basically super villain-esque. And Fair they enough. had a, um, they had a, a a contaminated plant, a Japanese lily that took over the Mississippi. So they were trying to buy, okay. get tax. They were trying to get quarter of a million dollars of taxpayers' money to buy a whole bunch of hippos. What? Yeah, I'm not what? even kidding. Yeah, to there buy was a not, bunch of hippos. Yeah, they're going to import a whole bunch of hippos from Africa to the Mississippi. Not to mention the fact that they're thirty, well, three three tons and murder people. They are the most dangerous animal in Africa. Yeah, and they were just like, oh, we'll just release them into the river and they'll eat all the flowers and we'll be fine. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like how super villainy super villainy do you have to get to like you know what we should yeah. do we should get like a million dollars together and we'll buy it by a whole bunch I mean, of that's hippos like, that's like the sort of thing that happens like in a, in a disaster scenario this is sort of thing that comes out of someone's mind when they're like everyone's sitting around a table something shit's going really bad and then someone just throws that idea out there because they've like put together two things you know like yeah. like they've you know they're sitting around the room like oh dying because this bad plant um this bad plant's natural predator is the hippo let's get all the hippos yeah no that's, no greg that's, that's dumb that, <laughs> that's like a that's that meme of greg getting thrown out the window next exactly um <laughs> the the uh reminds me of two things and then i'm gonna segue back to the statement i was gonna say before um the the hippo concept is ridiculous for for a mm-hmm. starter because um that's just it's like you're not gonna get to control them they're just gonna wander off like and then if they yeah. breed out of control then you're just stuck with fuck the flowers you're now stuck with hippos like and it reminds exactly. me of that it's like introducing um cats and and stuff to New Zealand to yeah. uh, try and combat the other pests that we brought. <laughs> we've got rats uh what are we gonna do we'll get cats to kill the rats they're killing all the birds now and also the rats are they've teamed up together to hunt the birds oh well <laughs> oh god <laughs> we'll get something bigger to eat the cats um dogs. Uh, yeah we'll get dogs to eat the cats and now we're overfisted with dogs don't worry we'll get um that's the simpsons simpsons quote from when he uh releases the lizards yeah and it's like oh we've got a f- special type of snake that eats the lizards well then we're stuck with lizards oh it's stuck with snakes and so oh we'll get a special kind of baboon that eats the uh, eats the snakes but then we've got baboons don't worry when winter comes they all freeze to death um segueing back to what i was talking about before um we hold big big international companies very unaccountable these days like when yes. all those disasters yes. happen where they dig oil out of the ground Mm-hmm. it's usually in the sea like don't get me wrong it's not like happening in your backyard fracking on yeah. the other hand so fracking is fuck. Yeah. um have you done what fracking is Please well, google it now. i mean the thing about fracking is that if it wasn't happening then we would currently be in an ecological crisis because we'd be out of oil so here is that yeah but then i think if we had no oil 
we'd probably have built the built more efficient because it'd be a bigger market for electric cars. Maybe. Or I maybe kind of the, feel like everything will just go to go to shit <laughs> because we have so much so much uh, uh, infrastructure based on the requirement for fossil fuels. So if we suddenly ran out of oil, like we kind it'd of be Mad Max, to, folks. Yeah, exactly. It would just turn into Mad Max because all of the trucks that carry all of the food and all of the other stuff would be unable to run without extremely high prices, which means all of your produce, all of your stuff that's not internet power and Oh, well, some, some power, <laughs> internet power, and that's it, pretty much. Anything that's not that is uh, is going to be extremely expensive to get. And then by by proxy, those things are going to get more expensive as well. So everything's just sort of going to culminate in a big crash, and that's when they'll finally switch over to other stuff. Yeah, we'll finally get But luckily, that, uh... Elon Musk has been putting in some stuff into... Uh, <laughs> Thanks, back to Elon. Elon. Thanks, Elon. Um, putting some stuff into electric vehicles, but so was everybody else. Hyundai. Uh, yeah. Um, the the Hyundai is quite nice. Uh, the there's some big players coming out this year that have got some big exactly. like supercars that are like highly electric. Uh, that well, Beamer's friggin' gorgeous, and I'm not a Beamer mm. fan because like everyone says Beamer drivers are dicks, and they are. Um, yes. not as big as dicks as cyclists <laughs> holy shit when there's six of them in a row fuck you people who who yeah, bred with these illegal. motherfuckers like honestly it's actually illegal but yeah I know it's illegal but they so still funny. still do it like it's actually uh, illegal to ride to a breast as well so that's pretty funny um, yeah there was that town that got taken I'm pretty sure I've said this before there was a town that was lit- in New Zealand that was held hostage by cyclists <laughs> what <laughs> they were literally disturbing the economy because they were like all going together in like one giant group. It was like oh it was God. like a tour to France, but constantly down the street, and people were Jesus literally Christ. getting late to work, and it was affecting the economy in that town. Um, if that's wrong, um, I've been awake for twenty hours. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> it sounds um, right to me. <laughs> yeah, it sounds right. Cyclists are dicks. That sounds right. C- cyclists are terrorists. Yeah. <laughs> well, that. Yeah. Uh, cyclists also helped the the French beat the uh, nazi occupation uh, tour de yeah. france there was someone that was carrying messages anyway moving on back to what yeah. i was saying we hold big companies that preview produce fossil fuels very unaccountable for the action oh, yeah. and, the, and the damage they do we, so this we whole hold so many companies yeah just big t- even just like big tech we hold extremely unaccountable for a lot of stuff amazon fucking jeff bezos come on what are you doing mate oh a um, shout out to everybody who hates cabri roses fuck cabri yeah. boycott cabri <laughs> they're destroying yeah, the amazon and killing orangutans i would rather have orangutans than those shitty cabri roses i got this year because those yeah. things are fucking nasty they used yeah. to be delicious when i was a kid they were my favorite you were, yeah. Everyone used to eat all the nice ones first and eat yeah. all the crap ones last. I did it the other way because I'm one of those backwards motherfuckers who actually enjoys chocolates. So I ate I all the right. horrible ones first, made myself sick, didn't eat any more, and then I'd come back the next day and get the you know the hazelnut swirl and the peppermint I, I one. Never liked that one. Well, never fuck you. Them. You're wrong. <laughs> See, you probably, is, you probably what, like Turkish that, delight. I, I like. I fucking do. That's right. <laughs> Monster. <laughs> It's perfect. This is what this is why they exist for. You give all the bad ones to the people who actually like those. I once <laughs> so ate. So you were really doing it wrong. <laughs> I once ate seven cherry ripes in a row because someone got Cadbury favorites, and oh, um, I ended up filling up horribly sick because it was just like I don't know if he got a bad batch or was it just what they do now? It was like it half sucked. of his favorites <laughs> box was literally half of it was cherry ripe and he hates cherries that's like, great and i just like sat there and literally made myself sick eating cherry ripes because after that's you eat fantastic. a couple of those you i would have loved having favorite I, wait, when i actually ate cambria i would have absolutely loved having having cherry ripes and the, uh, half a cherry ripe favorites because now like i like i saw a bunch of people who got favorites for christmas you know because that's the thing and they just only got like two cherry ripes in there it's like what that's like the it. best one. <laughs> can, I, can I get those cherry wraps off you? And they're like, yeah, sure, freak weirdo. Have your fucking weird chocolate. Anyway, to finish my thought, mm. the concept of asteroid mining, mm-hmm. so pulling an asteroid into Earth's atmosphere and mining mm. off it. Oh, dangerous, but all right. Yeah. 
as a legitimate source of, and these people, people, the companies are trying to do it. They're trying to get to the mm-hmm. technology level, right? Yeah. We can't stop a disaster of an oil spill. I know it's underwater, mm-hmm. but an Which oil spill underwater. Messed up an asteroid. <laughs> but an asteroid, <laughs> that yeah, is. This is why you yeah. always, okay. So it, it would be absolutely out of the question trying to bring an asteroid back. There's no reason to do it as well, because it's much. it would be much easier to, to mine and even um, synthesize and do all that sort of stuff on the a- asteroid itself, because you deal with less gravity, you deal with less oxygen and other things around it that you can have a, basically have a completely controlled environment for whatever you're trying to mine, especially if you're mining like a, like a, um, like uranium or any sort of like heavy metal it's gold and um, platinum that they're apparently gold and have. platinum. Yeah. That sort of stuff, because it would be it, it, a lot of that stuff corrodes as soon as it hits oxygen and atmosphere, but there's none in space. So it would be much easier to sort that stuff out. But also, you could just put all your stuff in space, or you build all your stuff there, and then you don't have to worry about any, like, Earth labor laws either. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to worry space taxes. You, know? you can get space yeah, immigrants. Space, you know, space, space immigrants. Stuff. <laughs> exactly, you know. So yeah, again, we're back more. to supervillains. Um, so it is much more Space slaves, we're, yeah. But yeah, the whole the thing con- is that, like, yeah, bringing, the, the real issue is that even if they even if we got a space elevator it would be much cheaper for them to keep everything outside if they're going to use it outside then bringing it back because then they'd have to bring it back manufacture it or whatever they're going to do and then send it out again what's the point of that like what a waste of money (laughs) but yeah legitimate idea using iron propulsion to bring asteroids into yeah bring them into orbit like into like the moon's orbit or like just a bit further out that's that's perfectly all right and i think that would actually be kind of kind of good because then you don't have to make such a quick hop such a long jump to wherever you're going but at the same time if we've got the facilities we might as well just build like a big space station in the belt you know like the expanse expanse did oh my god then, such a good series yeah. <laughs> and then just have everything um have all of your manufacturing go on in the belt and then have freighters move whatever they need you know there's no there's no good reason on bringing everything close and holding it close to earth when we've got the facilities to get out there you know there's no there's no good reason for it other than like governmental ones wait is the expanse just... season three out and i just haven't seen it or is it not out because it's not on netflix i don't think that explains it i haven't seen it on netflix yeah. I need my Netflix in my life. Thanks. Yeah, because it f- it was in April. Jesus. Yeah, that thing takes forever to come to Netflix. It's really annoying. I still haven't yeah. watched the second season because it oh, the second season's amazing. Netflix. Yeah, I sort of watched season one. Was fascinated by it. Got super excited, and then ran out of it. And then you had that like screaming monkey moment where you're like, "Oh my god, I watched an entire season of a show and there's none more." And yeah. then all the time i did the same thing with altered carbon as well yeah i oh my god i did that as well and then i keep trying to Actually, rewatch it talking about yeah talking about altered carbon i just rewatched <laughs> nice i just rewatched discovery uh because oh, there's nice. a new season coming in like yeah 19 Next 20 year. days hell yeah can't so, wait for that shit um what did you think of discovery because i know um that random guy hasn't watched it and doesn't give a shit about because well, he doesn't care about star trek um, well he just but- hasn't been taught he yeah, hasn't learned he doctor. hasn't learned today <laughs> he doesn't like he doesn't actually like sci-fi he likes doctor who um but anyway um i thought it was all right um i thought like the last half of it was the better part especially once they started like tying in um all of the other shows together properly in a good way um i'm really not i'm not sure how they're gonna do spock very well but you know they surprised me with this one considering all the klingon stuff that they had going on um that's really the only gripe for me is that like the klingon stuff doesn't really make sense um because of what we've seen uh, of them as the (coughs) from the other series where they were completely different um i think my my favorite appearance of the the actual physical appearance of the klingons would have to actually be in the alternate timeline zachary quinto chris pine star trek do you reckon you like that one <laughs> yeah i like the like the piercings and i liked their sort of like real gothic over the top look this yeah, is more of like a kind of 
I, I think it was a 100%. subtle change, like a subtle yeah. enough to, and like even the way that the the ships moved, they were more organic looking, which is super alien because physically they can't do that. Yeah. And they, they were just like models that just popped and had fireworks on them. But um, yeah. until we started getting good CGI. But even mm. then, like, I don't even think it was until like midway through SG-1 then CGI was like pri- on primetime C- uh, sci-fi, like that higher level. Well, the thing is that like the, the last um, Star Trek that had, or the, the show, the, the show that had like proper CGI was um, Enterprise. And that was the one that kind of went <laughs> down the hole. So that's kind of why they never really knew it was for them um because they've just been using puppetry um for the for the most part and then voyager and um uh deep space what's nine. It called? deep space nine had like pseudo cgi they had um some computer animated stuff um for like um they had computer ma- computer made models and stuff yeah. for a lot of the stuff but they didn't use like cg they they used a different kind of thing um because they never had to use it on people but it's enterprise where they actually did it on human people they cg'd uh, there's like a whole bunch of shots where they're out in, in spacesuits being cgified and it's like oh oh no i love so, it when something doesn't yeah. have the right texture maps and they just look like everything's yeah, it's shiny just, it's just so everything's anyway. made of glass um yeah anyway um the klingons for, the, for honestly for me the klingons by them if you take away everything else Every every other part of the, very the, the show, the the Klingons from Discovery uh, are honestly my, my are my favorite depiction of the Klingons because they they really they really work for they've really tied both of the sides together in their like um, their culture and their and their idea set and all that sort of stuff. It's just the fact that it doesn't make sense time wise where they look like that because yeah. they're trying to say that 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 the other versions of uh, how they're supposed to look as well. So it's to say that the Kirk's ones were more human and then they slowly became more looking like this by Picard's time. But these ones are like in between those two times and they look completely different. And they're trying to say that like because of the the, the alteration, um, the, the, the human, they're trying to make them look more human for like infiltration and sort of stuff thing that happens um, as part of that. But it doesn't really make sense because... Kirk still meets some proper Klingons that aren't necessarily there for Do you remember when Christopher Lloyd was a Klingon? Does anybody else remember that? <laughs> Christopher yes. Lloyd was a Klingon, folks. Um, he was, yep. yeah. There's a lot of people who've been Klingons. Yeah. Um, which is really great. Um, yeah. It's, it, for me, the, just the, the look and the feel of their ships and all that sort of stuff is very, it works for me the best but it's i like the, the ship of the story. death does a sarcophagus ship i think that was yeah. a really beautiful design um, no, that was really, really good. i liked how it was more of a like a religious artifact which takes me back to some of the other like fandoms that i love which is 40k where literally their armor their weapons their knives themselves like even their tattoos are like actual relics which i think yeah. is really That's cool fun. um yeah and the thing about for me um, is it also kind of it ca- kind of gets to the good parts of of what um, the Halo franchise is pulling on as well um, with the the cloaking technology and how it's like an ancient technology for them um, that they'd lost and it's very much like the Arbiter um, the, the in the Covenant sort of stuff which is kind of pulling on a lot of <laughs> Star Trek stuff as well. Um, it's a the, good the Arbiters. It is so the Arbiters um uh a relic his, armor his relic like, his relic armor yeah his relic armor has cloaking it's like ancient cloaking technology which is why you can't use it all the time but it makes sense gameplay wise but it's like that's it's a really nice thing and it even kind of looks kind of like like that it's got the same very similar relic um with uh, runic stuff paint, printed on it yeah. sort of feel and it, it, yeah it really took me back um to when halo was good <laughs> so that was always nice as well um yeah other than that like all the other all of the other episodes um that just weren't that weren't klingon related didn't like didn't grate me at all um it was just whenever they whenever the klingon said something about about something and i'm just like that's not how it happened god damn it <laughs> <laughs> um but then having the the alternate reality um the, the oh the ultimate dimension 
Yeah, that was that just, was cool. That was that was top notch, especially when it like it also like harkened back to Enterprise as well. Like it didn't just do the Kirk stuff with with the Spock and all that because that happens later for them technically, but it it brought in the Enterprises um, two episodes of that. Yeah, where um you know where what's her face becomes the Emperor <laughs> Empress as well, and then the 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 ship from the the real timeline being brought back, and it's just it's so good. It's actually really good. And the, the the explanation for like the the dark um, rooms all the time to say that like because in the evil universe to show that it was evil is like a thematic thing they always had low lighting yeah and to say that the reason for that was because all the humans in the in the bad universe the Terrans had had poor eyesight they couldn't they didn't like bright lights yeah and it's like that's so good that's actually amazing and that's better how lighting it than into, the Last Jedi yeah. Exactly. So, well, we won't get onto that. Let's no, not that's, that. that's another day. Um, <laughs> I think personally, stand out for me for Discovery is the fact that instead of a male main character, um, mm. we focus on Michael Burnham, the only yeah. mutineer, and she I mean, is a really well done character. She is. She's a fantastic character. And um, the I don't like the shoehorn in of the of the love interest stuff that was going on there um i feel like it, it would have made sense if they had more time to, yeah. to push that out um but the way that it was like just suddenly there kind of irked me a little bit um, especially considering they're trying to basically sell that 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 episode where they didn't even remember what was happening all the time um basically like was their love interest development and it's like yeah that, that doesn't work that doesn't work guys because i don't remember that um but yeah it, little little things you know there's nothing there's nothing glaringly bad about about a lot of her character and her and her stuff which is really nice um that yeah they, they did go with a, a really strong female um actual female character instead of you know instead of going on the captain all the time and i really liked how the captain was evil yeah that's so good <laughs> and a fantastic actor like yeah he was a fantastic actor as well um I'm just gonna he just it. like the thing is like he for the first few episodes he really like acted off he played that that bad guy really well that made yeah. you really unsettled and you think that he's bad but then he slowly like kind of became all right in a way you sort of sort of understood him and you thought that that was like he was actually good but there's just like a kind of an asshole and then they flip it around on you again you're like he's actually a bad guy it's like oh my god so yes. well done um, yeah. I quite liked the uh, Hugh and uh, Hugh and oh god, what's his name? Paul, Hugh and Paul's relationship. Mm, that was really good. Um, that was really really good. Because I really I'm, I'm like I have nothing against like un you know the LGBTQ B whatever yeah. community. <sighs> I have nothing against like it's too long. I can't remember it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's better having it more portrayed in a so normal way exactly that's and how it's that's how it really should be yeah it should never be it should never be in a in an overt way or a like like a crazy like uh people making a fuss about it in any sort of way because if you keep trying to do, if you keep doing that then you're gonna really undersell your what you're trying to do you know you're trying to make it normal and it is normal it's fine yeah. But you know, there's obviously a whole lot of people who don't think it's normal. But to to get them to understand that, you need to make it normal. <laughs> and like I really, that. I found uh, a beautiful, beautiful moment in uh, when he's in the in the spoilers for anybody who see, haven't seen Star Trek Discovery. Pause now, watch <laughs> 13, ep- 13 episodes, and then come back and unpause um, several days later. Uh, the moment returns and he looks at him after he's dead and yep. says and they're brushing their teeth which with the weird toothbrushes like i never even thought like oh yeah they use sonic showers so they must use some like, other teeth related yeah. dental hygiene teeth, teeth cleaning yeah. yeah um and that moment where he's like this is a bit that i like the most of our relationship and i was mm. like that is such a like an honest to sweet moment because yeah. there's every any so relationship human. you have yes yeah, so human very human <laughs> um any relationship you have with doesn't matter who it is there's always a moment where that moment that you stands out to you is a bit you 
enjoy the most. Yeah. Exactly. Um, have you seen Mandy yet? No. You need no. to watch Mandy. Um, okay. I watched it when I was staying at the random guy's house. Fair and um, Nicolas Cage is amazing. Oh Bro, he's amazing. <laughs> there is a, it's in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. He has a, okay. he has a sword fight with chainsaws. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. You have to watch this movie. Um, okay. Is it on Netflix? No, it's it's on the the other streaming service we all have access uh, to. It's on, the, it's on the cloud. Sweet. Nice. Yeah. Um, the magic right, clouds that, really yeah you, you get you get on that shit you get on it you get on it yeah um Fair other than that standing out yeah i completely recommend recommend everything we've previously mentioned yeah um, absolutely there's something else i'm looking excited to watching oh fucking but no i'm gonna reverse that bird box mm-hmm. have you seen bird yeah, box i have i have seen that your opinion in, in 30 seconds because yeah, i'm gonna have a rant right. here I think it was shit. I, I personally <laughs> think it was shit. I think that it there were it, like fifth, good fifty percent of the movie was fantastic, and the rest was was boring and lame and should not have been included. <laughs> <laughs> that's my feelings of it. So that's why I said it was all right because it's possible as a whole, but otherwise I probably wouldn't watch it again. Yeah, I, I, I've I liked Bright, and I'm excited for the sequel. Oh. oh god you didn't <laughs> because um okay, okay. yeah all right and i'm gonna live by that statement because i enjoyed each, bright um each to their own i guess yep each to my own um tom as a character mm-hmm. is way better than mallory yep um the fact that a, a woman like this this is a thing that i find i'm not a parent all right i know yep. you're not a parent um no. Not technically, yeah. Technically not a parent, yeah. <laughs> um, you, you keep kidnapping kids at the um, mall <laughs> and if the yeah. st- STG are going to come fuck up your day. Exactly. Um, yeah. No mother, no like no mother figure mm. would ever call one of her, which is clearly her child, because mm. it's clearly her child. And the yeah. like, I know she was going to give them for adoption. There are literal, literal reasons. Well, Okay, biologically so think, that the thing you is, wouldn't act like that character i think the thing that they missed out on on the opportunity of, of doing is that they didn't actually they didn't actually develop her correctly because from 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 reading between the lines of effectively what was going on there is that i think she actually had um some something going wrong with her head like she was either some sort of some of autistic or, or something going on um that she wasn't she wasn't completely um neurotypical yeah. in the way that she yeah. connected with people and i think that's was really undersold and uh, the reason why that it was for me particularly is because again the thing that i hate the most about any any film here any any art form in, in anything is the flash forward yeah don't do it don't do it don't start at the don't start at the end you can start at the middle that's fine i love it when that happens starting at the end ruins everything and that's what they did they had these random flash forwards to her being in the in the future five years later and it's like that's you've ruined everything because as soon as we know these characters ruined it. as soon as we meet all these other it. characters that weren't there at the end of the five years of the oh, okay i'm not going to get emotionally invested in any of these people because yeah. i know that they're not there anymore yeah and then as soon yeah it's just it's it's pointless it was it was totally pointless to have any of that stuff and that's why i'm saying that's the 50 percent of the movie that should just not have been in there you know not to, mention, fine. not to mention the fact that the entire movie is named after something that is only mentioned only if you actually think about it. It's never actually yeah. mentioned. Like, the entire movie is called Bird Box. Spoilers. Mm. John Malkovich is amazing. Spoilers. Yeah, yeah, um, the Bird Box is related to the fact that the demons or djinn or whatever the hell they're describing them as in the movie, which when you see them, they're invisible. Yeah. But you still have to blindfold yourself. Kind of- and Can't only work. crazy people are unaffected. Um, well, it's not a post-apocalypse a thriller. Way. It's a post-apocalyptic sci-fi fucking bullshit. Well, it's um, not even really a thriller, yeah. Because yeah, they, they ruin all of investment. Straight yeah, away, exactly. So yeah, there's nothing you thrilling about it. This. <laughs> exactly. There's no tension. If we, if, yeah, if we had like started from the, from the get-go, from right there in her life, and then just things started happening, and you didn't know which characters were going to disappear, you know, then 
sure, you can call it a thriller, because then you got emotionally invested in these characters. They die, you're like, oh no, they died. Not, oh, I didn't care. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Um, what I really nice. like in movies is when you get a survivor, like, this is several, several movies I oh. could name, but I can't because it's 20 hours, 21 hours, yeah. 21 yeah. hours and counting. Um, when it's the cunt people that live. Yeah. I love that shit. I love that shit. Um, the remake well, here's Dawn a, of the here's Dead. Here's another thing for me. Was um, uh, Train to Busan. Um, oh, yeah, exactly. One, yeah. Where it wasn't the assholes that live. They did eventually get the just desserts, which is beautiful, fantastic for for audience, like just feel good sort of stuff. But the fact that the two best people are the ones that get, get messed up as well. And it's like, that's that's perfect. That's really where you want to go with something like this. And that's what I kind of really hope did is specifically because she became an asshole. And that was kind of like the arc that they were going for on the side bit. Yeah. When, when John Malkovich is like, I'm John Malkovich, I'm an asshole. And she's like, I don't like assholes. And then you realize that she became an asshole so that she could survive. And you're like that, that should have been played on more. And it should have been the point is that she became an asshole. And then she should have died at the end. She, they should have just taken the kids and she should have died <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot of lot of ways i would have done differently yeah um, and i honestly think that like the creature stuff as well was really not played as well as it could have been i liked the idea that like their eyes changed when they saw it and like it was like an actual thing that happened but the fact that they never really explained as to why other than just like saying, oh, the mentally insane were the people that, that, that survived this, that guy who was supposed to be, um, just, a you know, a businessman from, from the look of him, it, sure. You can kind of interpret that maybe he was actually one of the insane people, but it kind of, they didn't really paint that very well, um, to say that, that he still was fine after it. And even then, like, he was like, he was mostly lucid as well. Right. Yeah lot of that so so even if even it was if temporary was, psychosis or a split personality or schizophrenia yeah, even if he was been... actually crazy or whatever and that's why he, su- he survived it he wasn't crazy while he was inside <laughs> like yeah because it was like that, that there was a time frame where everyone's like just living together perfectly and then he's like snaps one day yeah so and the whole really fact weird. that they knew about the birds thing was never explained. It's like, how do the crazy people know the birds tell when the entities are? like it just exactly a lot of there's, like, it was the same, it was the same yeah. thing that I didn't like about, um, annihilation. Was it annihilation with Natalie Portman? Um, yeah. Yeah. What, did, what, did, what didn't you like about that? Um, I think that I, you can't do like, isn't it? It's, it's a multi book series, isn't it? I don't know. Okay. Can't remember. I'm going to Google it. Uh, it. I mean, the movie itself was a good as a whole, and that's because they didn't try to, like, they didn't try to explain anything in that one. And that's what really got me, is that in the birdcage, they tried to explain some things, but not everything, and they went not far enough or yeah. or too far, you know? They were in the wrong place. They should have either not explained anything at all, just had things just crazy happen, or go full explanation. And that's that's where they missed the mark. Novel by the same name. Sorry, yeah, continue. Yeah. So, but the thing about the monsters for me was that they really should have had some at some point had it visible as to what they were seeing. So that could have been the ending with where she dies, is that she finally sees. Yeah, you get a peekaboo ending, which yeah, is get a peekaboo a, ending. Yeah, of her seeing what what what, what was what was coming up, and it should have been her her sister or her mother like her sister's her sister thing just just something that like really like breaks her mentally especially considering all the things that have been happening like the, all the bad shit that's been happening to her it should have been like her sister and her, her boyfriend all of that shit just like in a culmination thing and then just like breaking her mind yeah and that would have that would have been it you would have been like oh shit i get it it was it was showing it was showing them all of the worst parts of their lives, making them really regret living and really like mess their shit up. Especially considering like we heard that at the, be- at, like the beginning of the person talking to her mum being dead sort of stuff. Yeah. It's really about that. Like the put them coming and being like, Hey, come, come, come with me. Come, come to the afterlife. This is where I am sort of stuff. Um, and that's why the crazy people wouldn't have been affected, which really explains it all is that the crazy people weren't affected because they didn't have anything like that. They didn't have anyone telling them 
to to do that instead or that because of their, their, their psychosis seeing those people wasn't the same it didn't match up yeah, in their brains as much yeah. they didn't think oh hey that person's dead now i should kill myself and go there they're just like oh i'll just hang around <laughs> like yeah. i'm gonna see them all the time now they're they're back alive <laughs> like it's that sort of thing the different kinds of of psychosis but at the same time it also could have easily have been like a um an actual demon sort of thing you know like she sees an actual like an actual glimpse of god sort of stuff um which in theory is is is, is, is part of like religious theory um seeing the the almighty god or, or, or any of his angels or any supposed to drive that sort of supposed to drive you crazy as well so it doesn't make it, it makes sense in that sort of way if it was like a, a just a beautiful angel as well there also could have been a real turn on its head where she like sees like this divine beauty and then goes crazy and kills herself <laughs> like that would be seeing would something be a, that would literally snap you um yeah. to to finish that thought because i've been staring at this um annihilation yeah. is part one of a three book series oh okay so that's why know. it was sort of a bit funny for me um because they tried to I cram so much information into a short oh, movie right. so with lots of cinematography three. so it was a three it was a three movie stuffed into one so yeah three, book, three stuffed books into stuffed into one um okay. i mean i thought i thought it felt um i thought it felt really complete um it didn't feel like a lot was left out other than the explanations for things but that's what was really good for me is that well it's cinematography and it was anything. beautiful like absolutely oh, yeah, it fantastic um it's just yeah when you go into like a high concept sci-fi where they're throwing all this shit like this area and blah and this and that and then you get thrown into like oh they're not even the actual people they're actually fucking like yeah, weird the, that was clone like the cool things thing. that was the cool thing about it is that shit just got really crazy and nothing was really explained i like that kind of movie there's like been other movies like that um i can't remember any off the top of my head and um, you haven't been awake as long as i have yeah i haven't i like I the crazy i didn't like uh talking of that uh multiple movies same universe uh cloverfield yeah. 10 cloverfield lane oh, is a fantastic movie God. standalone standalone yeah. um regardless of the actual alien and the robot and the whatever and yeah but just the acting and it's fantastic um i he every, every character's believable in that yeah. um also have a little bit of a thing for the female lead in that after seeing her in uh, another movie um uh, ramona flowers anyway it wasn't that but yep um was it sky high <laughs> no was it sky high please no, it wasn't um <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheerleader movie uh, uh a movie about cheerleaders fair enough um but that's a quote from the movie that i'm talking about if anybody uh pass the quote and they win the uh Fano podcast bingo of the week Ooh. the thing that i was going to say is that paradox makes no sense but clover clover field the movie the original movie which has tj miller in it um just name drop i don't mm. know why tj miller just came into my head because i've just been noticing tj miller on a whole bunch of shit and i know there's a whole bunch of curse of contra- maybe that's what it is maybe okay. i'm only remembering people that's got controversial shit around them at the moment that does seem to make people remember things yeah um tj miller uh reversing in my brain do 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 what did i say before that cloverfield, cloverfield paradox made no sense no, like in no movie. timeline it was, and it was it was not should so, have been standard alone should have yeah. been just like called paradox the other there's like sh- a bad there's a there's another so as much as like there's the whole have crazy shit happen and don't explain it movies as much as so long as they're like kind of coherent uh since in a, in a kind of way which annihilation definitely was it did have some coherency to it as much as the ending sort of made you go what yeah um and I, uh, um, paradox was it a paradox yeah it was paradox um just shit bad shit just started going weird and things never really made sense yeah like, from like a, when they were like plummeting to the, earth and they were like cloverfield monsters and yeah even within their own like even within their own logic that didn't make sense you know and like the guy's arm moving around um the guy random guy being filled with the, the 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 core randomly the woman coming from a ship that's supposed to have exploded before yeah um yeah the fact that like the 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 movie can be sold by the but can just immediately um 
be completely turned off after like the first few minutes after the one guy looking at this computer screen explains exactly what's going to happen <laughs> and you're like okay cool that's the movie i'm done yeah <laughs> you know it's, it's like it by doing this a... power source stuff all sorts of crazy stuff's going to happen hell's gates are going to open crazy monsters all this sort of stuff yeah. oh okay i can turn it off now thanks <laughs> yeah the other movie that stood out to me uh, as having a lot of potential and then being really paint by numbers about halfway mm. through was life okay i'm gonna see that one oh, okay um basically they get a microbe um uh, let me just google that before i go fucking <laughs> life movie uh, official 2017 if you haven't seen it don't bother watching it um mm. space probe soil samples extraterrestrial oh, life um basically about halfway through the movie it becomes halfway between alien and species and then the ending is really fucking ca- like i could have picked i could have picked what was going to happen straight away straight away so they're yeah. like cool we're going to launch one life pod oh but he's contaminated yeah i'm going to go in the other life pod and save everybody and then at the end, it's like, oh, cool, which life pod made? Guess what? It wasn't the fucking one with the person, and it. it was the one that was contaminated. Oh, now the Earth's destroyed. Like, yep. cut, Ooh. paste, like, fucking bullshit. Like, the same yep. shit every time. Like, okay. so unoriginal, bad writing, fuck you. But on the same similar idea of Cloverfield Paradox should have just been a movie without Cloverfield in the beginning of it, and yep. 10 Cloverfield Lane should have been a Cloverfield movie without... No, it should have been a Clover- like the Cloverfield edition to stuff just makes things but yeah, yeah. It doesn't really it's not necessary. And the thing is they don't they don't really tie together in any sense of the word. It's like a monster at the end. So if you like, go like okay, super well, deep, apparently there's like a tie in shit. But it's like products you know, in the background universe. Yeah, but the thing is that like the paradox stuff doesn't make sense to the uh, the first one still. Because the first one they didn't they didn't have any explanation. They didn't say anything about a satellite in this in the sky doing stuff there was that like um, random at the end there was a credit and random in the credits thing there was a falling thing from but it was no it was absolutely not the big spaceship <laughs> yeah it was not that it was a tiny thing that fell out of the sky because so, in the in the when you dig deeper um because there's a lot of viral marketing done by for that mm-hmm. um the original original idea from what i remember mm-hmm. at 21 hours awake um is that there was a new f- like superfood product that was being yeah. mined by a japanese company and it came from a source underneath the ocean yeah what they were mining which they didn't realize were the embryonic sacs of clover the yeah. monster exactly. um which had like a crazy lifespan and blah 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 ignoring the fact that if you had something underwater that large and when it came on land it would crush itself under its own weight but anyway it was supposed to be a embryonic sack of this crazy animal that they accidentally awoke and yep. the satellite was related to something else that was also related to the company that was mining it and yep. there were product placements in the background that were related to the japanese oh and the, the main character worked for the japanese company that's what the tie-in was. He was working yeah. for the company that was mining the shit underwater. It was a superfood, yeah. which they thought was like cool kelpie stuff. Yeah. Um, and then it was this monster and that turned into infections and some of the cool stuff. Yeah. I really liked, um, I really liked Cloverfield. I enjoy the movie and I don't... Cloverfield as a, as a story is all right. I hate shaky cam stuff. Yeah. If they didn't have that, I think it would have been a fantastic movie. Um, I remember someone... Uh, what the hell was it? I, I don't know if it was a joke or a troll. Someone mm. posted online, oh, I got a really shit copy of Cloverfield. Like, whoever fucking <laughs> was filming it in the movie theater, like, <laughs> needs to fucking sort this shit out. And they were like, no, yeah. that's how it's supposed to be. He's like, no, nah, I'm going to download another good. copy. He's like, what the fuck? Is there only, like, one copy? And it was all filmed by this one dude. And they're like, no, 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 that's legitimately, like, the movie. And it's that, like, that's oh. That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> Because there's only been yeah. a few decent ones that have stood out, eh? Like, oh, I, I know you don't like Cheeky Cam. i just explain oh, that. Oh, I don't. Yeah. Um, uh, Rick, one, Rick, yeah. Rick, Rick 2. Rick, Rick's the only ones <laughs> that, I can, that I can say that are all right. It's because they're not really that shaky. Um, yeah. Even Quarantine yeah. was not that shaky. It's because, it, it basically, that's the difference between having a, a cameraman, 
So saying that the the person holding the camera is actually a cameraman, and that means you can have a little bit of stabilization going on because they're you know they're good at it, um, or having it just be a random Joe's picked up a camera, and that's where they start having real bad shaky cam, and it's like don't have that, just say that it's a cameraman and let him have some actual good shots, then it's fine. You're okay with that. No, TJ Miller. Having the entire having the entire movie just be someone with a camcorder fucking waving their hands around. It's like. I could just watch this at home. <laughs> yeah. I didn't pay $10 to go see this. <laughs> the concept you just mentioned is interesting cuz um I'd also mm. like I'd also like a movie that was from multiple people's points of view. Mm. Um I'm just talking hypothetically from a, a found footage movie where you're yeah. like kind of accumulating stuff. There was a really good one. Um, There's a good zombie movie. Um, I say good zombie movie. Um, it was a George A. Romero um, sort of found footage one as well. Um, that was well, that was that good. was um, it was. fuck. I've got it on DVD or Blu-ray actually. Mm. Um, that was actually really good um, because they had some good shots. <laughs> <laughs> like that's all you. You just need to not have it be completely shaky, and it's fine. It's fine. I think found it's, footage is fine. Fuck, shaky is not. I can't remember what it is now. Um, mm, I, my, um, I think I might be. It's not Survival of the Dead because that's the one with the the. Oh, I can't remember. The one. Oh, there was a there joke was. that a mate of mine used to make because we watched one of the George A. Romero ones. Um, mm-hmm. The one with the black zombies, the main character, the African American descendant zombies, the main character. Okay. And it's got um the Mexican dude in it. Oh fuck, man, my brain is like losing it. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Uh, no, no, it's not. Um, dawn, hang on, I'm just going to Google it. Uh, dawn of the Dead, when the dead will walk the earth. That's 2014. Uh, George A. Ramirez, it's the person I wanted to look at. He kind of looks like Stan Lee, except creepier. Mm-hmm. Um, Day of the Dead, no, that's 85. Um, yeah. 2010. What the hell movie was it? I don't know. Diary, Diary of the Dead is the one we're talking about. Yeah. Diary of the Dead is really the, the, the final footage one. Um, Land of the Dead was the one where the, the, my mate said that the, the, the main zombie needed a, a cape because he was like a hero zombie. Oh my God. And um, Sean and um, Edgar Ryder in that. It's not Sean, Simon, Simon Pegg, Inga mm. Ryder and Land of the Dead. That's awesome. Yeah. There's a cameo as zombies. Of course. Yeah. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was good, personally. I enjoyed mm. that. Um, but to wrap up, because it's been, um, been, been some time now. Mm. 20, Quite. 21 hours awake. Um, <laughs> I was going to mention something important, no, I can't remember. Just keep oh, watching yeah. movies, guys. You know, just just you know. Yeah, maybe good. Just do it. Make make keep your decisions um, with the thumbs on Netflix and thumbs up black bo- the Black Mirror movie. Um, <laughs> even if you don't watch it, you know, just just <laughs> do what they did with the Oscars and they just gave Leonardo DiCaprio because he'd earned it. He had to fight a bear, um, mm-hmm. and then it was released that a lot of people didn't watch it. The Revenant, mm-hmm. which is a fantastic movie, and they're all idiots. But that's why I don't. I'm I'm that random guy. I don't I don't believe in the Oscars anymore. No, the Oscars are stupid. Don't. don't it's a pop- care popularity about those. contest based on old white. Basically, people. critics and even even actual just people watching movies in general. It's the, the whole Rotten Tomatoes thing. It doesn't matter what the critics say. It doesn't matter what the public says. You like what you like, um, and just watch those kinds of movies and just watch. I them like giant and, shark so like movies. Them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the critics say. It doesn't matter what the people say, because the the people are probably wrong. The critics are probably wrong. Just just like movies that you like, go watch them. Do it. Yeah, if you want to watch Atlantic Rim over Pacific Rim, you know, do it. <laughs> if you want to you watch anything watch Aquaman, made, it's yeah, fine. yeah. If you want to watch anything made by Warner Brothers, go ahead. <laughs> you know, we won't judge you. We'll we'll judge Only you a little bit, but we won't tell it to you. We will tell it to you. <laughs> Just, you just don't like them. It's simple. Like good stuff. Or whatever you like. Yeah. Just positive. Like, just like whatever you like. <laughs> whatever you like as long as we agree with it. It's part of the zeitgeist in the meta. Because that's the internet. <laughs> exactly. There yeah. you go. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to have to edit shit. Um, 
That sucks. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take the next my next Saturday off. Okay. I think, I hope. Otherwise, there'll be uh, a blank spot. But yeah, it's probably hit stop. 